Buona Soto race fans and welcome back to Trackstar's racing series. Today we are revving up for an electrifying round two of the TS3 Touring Cars Championship. Buckle up because we're taking on the stunning Sardinia Road Track A, a fictional track that is, that is as challenging as it is beautiful with this circuit here in the local islands of Sardinia off the Mediterranean coast. This circuit known for its bend for the blend of fast straights and technical corners promising High speed thrills and strategic racing for these 13 laps that we have coming up. Our drivers will need skills and precisions to navigate this undulating layout that makes their way to make their way onto the top of the podium. Get ready for some intense action as we dive into the heart of the TS3 Touring Car Series with the old GT500 machinery, the 2008 Nissan GTR, the Lexus SC430, and the Honda NSX. Who will dominate and make a mark this season in this epic season that has been dominated by one man in the opening round back at Monza. Before we dive into today's action, let's take a moment to reflect on the incredible performance that we witnessed in the previous round. Alexander Bandenhope for its FR Racing was nothing short of spectacular at Monza where he truly showcased his racing prowess. He is ready to make this season his season to capitalize and finally etch his name into the track stars history books. He missed out on taking pole position, but joined the pole man, Matt McCallum from CP Motorsports on the front row, but through patience and steering clear from the chaos that is the first chicane at Monza, he went on to clean sweep both races, leaving his competitors thinking how they can get Alex's number this time round for round two. His driving was a masterclass in precision and speed, and he seemed to have the perfect grip on the legendary Italian track, a true testament to his skills behind the wheel. With such a commanding performance last time out, all eyes are on him today to see if he can continue this form at Sardinia Road Track A. Will he maintain his own vintage streak? Will he be toppled off the top step in the championship? Or will one of his rivals step up and challenge his supremacy? There's only one way to find out. Let's get ready for some thrilling action here tonight. So, of course, we are here at Sardinia Road Track A, 5.1 kilometers long, 15 corners around this track, the longest straight being the, the pit straight, 700 meters as you wind from the back section all the way up towards the rise of the hill down to a downward braking for turn one. Two races here tonight, 10 laps, apologies there, I thought it was 13, but it is 10 laps here tonight with a total race distance of 51 kilometers. And as, as always, it is the new circuit that has been introduced to Track Stars Racing Series in 2024. Hasn't been used before, but now we get to see it used for the first time, and especially in the TS3 Touring Cars machinery. But let's get into it. My name is Nicholas Paltasso, and as always, you have joined this coverage being broadcasted for free on the World Wide Web on the Track Stars Racing Series YouTube channel. So to make sure you stay up to date with all things touring car racing in 2024, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, click that bell icon and get notified when the premiere stream when the, of the delayed broadcast goes live. Interact with the chat and give a like and thumbs up. Share around with your family and friends. It really helps us and your support means a lot to us. As we get ourselves ready for some thrilling racing here tonight, I'm joined by a familiar voice in the Track Stars community. He's been doing some excellent work behind the scenes to provide what to provide our wonderful audience and myself an amazing broadcast and graphics in 2024 for the delayed stream we are operating here on this channel. He is a legendary voice of the main series touring cars this year. He's a four times touring cars champion himself. And the man that got this league set up and running te all those years ago, 10 years ago exactly to the day, it is Jarman Dalitz. Welcome to the commentary booth for TS3. And I don't know about you, I feel like it's a bit of a throwback to when we were last in the commentary box back in 2021. So it's great to have you back here alongside me for this coverage. Yeah, thanks, bud. How are you doing, of course? Um, it's definitely great to be joining you in the commentary box here today. And yeah, definitely a bit of a throwback to... 2021 sort of with the TS3 touring cars certainly plenty of new faces joining the series and some existing drivers as well competing across our two races tonight so definitely a good little mix of youth and experience so you could say so should be interesting to watch. Well, as we mentioned earlier, that you, one, your driver as well, Alexander Bannenhope, has been making headlines uh, at the end of round one, taking that clean sweep victory and getting the maximum 200 points. So what is his mindset when he comes in tonight? What is he looking to do? Have you spoken to the man? 
uh, before the race, before they get into qualifying and the races. What is he? What is his feeling as he gets ready for the next two races? Yeah, he's certainly very focused on the task ahead. Of course, aware that maybe he can't win every single race, but of course he is going to give it a very good shot. And certainly across tonight, he'll be. Def he's definitely put in a lot of practice work. I've been joining him in the pit lane with the with the testing sessions that he's been carrying out. So certainly helping provide some motivation for him and giving him a bit of information as well wherever I can. Absolutely. We can't wait to see what Mark he can put on tonight. But as the cars cross the finish line, as we wrap up, as they wrap up their five minute qualifying session here at Sardinia, where we go racing for the first time in Trackstars TS3 Touring Cars, we now go to the qualifying results that have been made official by the race directors and at the end of the five minute qualifying session it is Richard Robertson for Robosport Racing that has taken out pole position in in the first race here tonight 0.9 clear of Nick Jones so nearly a second over his nearest competitor and he's now got himself up into that into that pivotal position in P1 while his championship rival Alexander Badenhope rounds up in third place then Muller Rothman in fourth for Kiwi Pit Lane, for Kiwi Pit Lane Sim Racing. And then we have Simon Stockdale, Mad Dog, 76, the Privateer in P5. Matt McCallum, last last race pole winner. A little bit of a little bit of an a little bit of a hard doing last time out at Monza. So he'll be looking to capitalize and bounce back for what could be a strong race for the CP Motorsports driver. We'll watch his name come up come up towards the front of the field. Then we've got Chris Wallace down in P7 and down rounding up the rear of the grid is Sean Smith. So the man that actually didn't partake in qualifying, he joined he joins us at the start of race one, but as a, as being a late attendee to the rent to the event itself, he'll be starting rear of the grid and he'll be looking to make his way up towards the front. Well, I know the man very well, and MC Motors will have a very good recruitment in Sean Smith. So watch for his progression in race one and especially throughout the whole event as well. We'll be looking to see his name move up towards that top five, top four, potentially on the podium, but we'll find out in due course. So usually this is the time where I would say to my co-commentator, Ryan Palmer, about the Monopoly money, who we're going to back for race one. But we've got Jarman alongside me, so I think you get to be involved with our uh, Monopoly money uh, involvement here. So who are your odds for taking out race one? Can we see Robson back a pole position to victory? Or can we see someone brand new that takes the next challenge? We could see Nick Jones, Rothman, maybe McCallum down P6. What is your take on this? Yeah, it's a very impressive lap time from Robinson taking pole position. So it's definitely going to be hard to go past putting the Monopoly money on him to take the win. But of course, Badenhop as well. He's certainly in third place. So he didn't qualify and pole for the first round and still picked up two wins so he could be a chance as well um definitely like jones and mccallum certainly showing some speed at the moment in the early rounds but yeah probably i would say from their monza performances just a little bit rough around the edges so they could find themselves towards the front but it'll be remain to be seen whether they can sort of sustain a challenge across a whole race yeah, absolutely. You can see from the qualifying as well, besides Robinson's lap time, you can see from Jones down to down to McCallum, it's just over a tenth of a second around this 5.1 kilometer circuit. That's pretty impressive, Jarman, as well, to see how competitive this TS3 touring car field is. Yeah, it is, it is extremely close between basically six cars across the field. So one small mistake, you can see yourself from being at the pointy end of the field to nearly at the back. Yeah, absolutely. And Chris Wallace has got a bit of work to do uh, in this race, but he's the, he's got some competition with the Lexus being on the front row in the hands of Nick Jones. So I'll be putting my Monopoly money on my fellow Lexus driver, Nick Jones, to see how he goes tonight. But I can't see the cars gridding up on the grid. The green flag is about to wave very shortly. And we're about to go live for race one here at the Trackstars T3 Touring Cars Championship for season 2024. It is Richard Robinson on pole position. Nick Jones in the Lexus SC 430, joining him on the front row as those five red lights are about to go. 
It is lights out, green flag racing, an even launch there between the two cars, but that secondary phase by Robinson has gone well clear of Jones, and Bandit Hope has joined him as well as they go down to turn one for the first time. Downwards, downhill braking, so drivers are going to have to be a little bit cautious trying to get onto the braking there. We can see Rothman has made a position, so Jones goes from P2 to P4, so not the start that he wanted, but it's a solid start by Robinson as he leads the field down towards turn four and through to the infield section where they lead up towards the cathedral end of the track. It's Robinson over Bandon Hope, Muller Rothman inside P3. So it's a great start by the Nissans and the top two contenders in this championship as they round up turn six, past the cathedral they go. Onto the back straight, eight drivers here tonight, but eight competitive drivers that are ready to tackle along this 5.1 kilometer circuit. As we go on board with Rothman down in P3, the lead Lexus driver from Kiwi, uh, Kiwi Pit Lane Sim Racing leads his fellow Lexus driver in Jones. As they go down towards turn nine, Joe's shows the nose, but it can't get it through just yet. It's giving a little bit more of a gap between the two Nissans up front, but Rothman just holds on to P3 and Jones, and then we have uh, Stockdale right down in P5. McCallum hasn't made any progression just yet, as we see the drivers running wide through the infamous turn 13 fast kink, the left-hand kink there that's caught so many drivers here. We can see Stockdale making contact with Jones as they lead side by side, going on to the main straight as they, turn, as they come negotiating the fast kink at turn 15, thoroughly flat out in these cars, and a little bit of pushing and shoving between the two drivers but looks like they've sorted themselves out and that is the end of lap one with Robinson in the lead, Bendit in P2 and we can see McCallum trying to go around the outside as they go towards turn one. Can he outbreak the Lexus? Oh, it's going to get close, giving each other racing room. No, it doesn't look like unfortunately. And we can see there Smith has had a bit of a spin there and he can't get that car rotated. It looks like he got contact from one of the drivers behind. We're not so sure who it was. But we'll find out after the event to see what happened. But so far, Jarman, it's a solid start by Robinson as he leads the pack coming up towards turn six of the cathedral section and a great healthy margin over his championship rival. Yeah, Robinson has done basically exactly everything that he could have asked for, for from that start. Got a perfect launch, got himself into the lead in the turn one. And now just establishing a small margin here over baden -Hop early on and that could prove proved to be crucial later on or as he gets a bit out of shape on the exit of the corner and that's just allowed Baden Hop to come through into the lead of the race. Yeah, cru uh, crucial mistake there by Robinson. He's very not he's not known to make a lot of mistakes there, but uh, he wasn't under pressure either. So a bit of troubles there, but I can see behind there, uh, looks like Rothman's had a bit of a spin as well. So he's down to P7, so he was P3 uh, going into turn nine, but he's dropped down to P7, unfortunately. And he's now into the clutches of Sean Smith right behind, but both of them run wide at the fast kink at turn 13. And Sean Smith is also not having a good time. Rothman struggling to get the car pointing in the right direction, but that's not unfortunate for him from P3 down to P7. Both Robinson and Rothman making a mistake at turn nine. Makes, it definitely makes uh, questions about the, with the direction of the wind. It is a bit of a crosswind going into turn nine, so in theory it shouldn't affect the balance of the car too much, but just two, two of the top three making mistakes early on. Yeah, it's definitely, certainly on this island very windy of course you can see the wind turbines in the background as well so that probably gives you a bit of a clue as to what kind of weather conditions you can expect and certainly has proved to be challenging for a lot of the drivers here tonight early on in this race yeah absolutely and we can see robinson's got a nice launch there just tucked underneath the rear wing of the it's fr driver in bandit hope the man that won two in a row at monza throughout this event robinson runs wide at turn nine can't couldn't get the car pulled up so he's lost a bit of time to bandit hope but we have the lead lexus in simon stockdale mad dog 76 in p3 nick jones right behind in p4 so Couple of positions lost there by the man that started on the front row with Robinson as he runs very wide and he can't get the car hooked around turn 13. Oh, it's another victim that's been that's uh, etched its name into the turn 13 fast kink. I know we always say with Dragon Trail Seaside Jump that we have the chicane of death, even we have the Tokyo Hump at the expressway, but I think this one might be a new feature here for us at Track Stars. We've got the turn 13 kink, which is catching out so many drivers. 
Yeah, that is definitely proving to be a treacherous corner. Just a few laps into our foray here to Sardinia. And certainly we could be earning ourselves another cult classic corner that provides a lot of action amongst the racing. As we just saw Jones having a bit of a spill there and now he's on the back of Wallace trying to regain a few of those spots that he's lost early on here. Two Lexus boys fighting it out for P5, the PHE Sports, in Chris Wallace versus Sandstorms Racing's Nick Jones. Looks like he got a good run around the outside, but he's actually given the position up as Wallace. So, obviously acknowledging that Jones might be a bit quicker. Maybe jo uh, Wallace may have not had enough time to practice, so maybe struggling a little bit. We saw that in the qualifying. He didn't get his qualifying lap in at the right time, unfortunately. That's why he was well down the order. So he might be just acknowledging that his fellow Lexus driver is just that little bit quicker, but he might be able to learn a thing or two if he stays behind for the rest of this race. But back up towards the front, we have Alexander Badenhope. We have Richard Robinson, the top two in the championship. Basically one and two on track, lap four of 10. As they go to us, turn 13, and that's a big lock up there by Badenhope, and he's run deep into turn 14 so if you if we look at where the track uh, where the wind is going it's a tailwind going into turn 14 he definitely got caught out by that Jarman and that's a huge mistake there he's lot he's already he's given up two seconds to Robbo yeah he must have not had enough practice I'm assuming with the wind turned on maybe going in that direction and just maybe maybe forgot that that was what was happening and maybe just decided to break a bit later expecting that there was no wind and yeah just got caught out by it so a bit of a costly mistake there from Baden Hope but he is still in P2 so I'm sure he'll be able to knuckle down a bit and press on and maybe try and score some kind of result out of this even if it isn't a win. Yeah, so at least he's still keeping P2 though, so he didn't drop all the way down to the back end of the grid. So it looks like everyone's quite well spread out. We've got a couple of battle packs, a battle pack for P1, and we've got this very tight battle pack for P3 between Stockdale and McCallum. McCallum trying to look anywhere possible to try and go around the outside of Stockdale as he goes very late on the brakes there, tries to outbreak the Lexus in Stockdale. Couldn't do it, unfortunately, but now sits right behind the behind Mad Dog in Simon Stockdale, car 70, car 12 in the NOS Energy Drinking, NOS Energy Drink, Lexus SC 430. But Jars is coming up towards turn three, both tentative there as they may not have seen uh, Baden Hope make a mistake there at turn 13, but I'm pretty sure they're well aware now that corner is quite a treacherous corner, and especially with these cars as well, with a very low aerodynamic uh, package that these old 2008s. Nissan GTRs, Lexus SC 430s, and the Honda NSX has a very low aero package, a very low aero package, a bigger engine, and less grip on the tyres. It obviously provides a lot of challenges for the new drivers that are coming into this series. So, like for the for the likes of uh, of Stockdale and McCallum and Jones, they're definitely not used to these cars in previous seasons since its initiation in 2022. But we had a lot of champions come through, and both cars have been able to tame these beasts. And so far, with the eight drivers that we've got so far, it looks like they're all doing a pretty good job here. And I think they're all starting to sell into a rhythm as we're on lap six of 10. Yeah, they're definitely starting to find their feet a lot more here as they approach the walls. Well, so we've just gone past the halfway point of this first race. So certainly settling down, maybe finding what they can and can't get away with. And, putting it into practice later on in this race. Oh, there's a bit of contact there oh. between, I think it is Stockdale and McCallum. And I think that was a bit of a lag incident there. So that's really unfortunate for both drivers. But unfortunately, I don't think we can really apportion any blame to either driver for that one, given the network issues that both of those drivers look to have had there. It's a bit of a shame there because it's always hard to judge when you have the network latency between drivers and especially between hosts as well. So very unlucky there for Stockdale. Obviously a little bit of an innocent victim to drop down to P6. So maybe it might get looked towards in the stewards room at the end of the race just to see what happens um, between McCallum and Stockdale. Both obviously will have providing evidence that 
you know, it could it was definitely a, a net code between the two drivers, but we'll wait and see what happens when the Stuart report comes out. But we are on lap seven to ten as we digress a little bit. We'll go through our top eight. We've got Robinson that has taken the lead away from Bandon Hope after he made a mistake down at turn 14, not judging the, the tailwind going into turn 14 and locked the brakes, locked the front brakes, couldn't get the car turned in. Robinson came in and seized the opportunity to take back P1 and now he leads on lap 7 to 10 ahead of Alexander Bandenhope, the championship leader in P2. Matt McCallum with a question mark over his head after that contact. We'll, we'll find out in due course what the result is, but he's but, but he's still holding on very nicely from P6 to P3. It's a solid drive by the CP driver. Nick Jones in P4 and we have Chris Wallace for PHG Sports in fifth place. Stockdale, unfortunately, from that incident on the last round has relegated himself down to P6. Very unfortunate way to and your first race here at Sardinia Road Track K. And then we've got Sean Smith, a very quiet race for Sean Smith in car 89 for MC Motorsports. A late attendance, but he is setting some good laps though, Jarman. 54.5, that's the fastest lap of the race here. So you, it just makes you wonder if he was actually here for the qualifying session, we would definitely be seeing him up towards the front. And unfortunately with Muller Rothman from P3 um, at, on lap two down to P8. So very, not a great race for the 23 and the Kiwi pit lane driver down in P8. But going back to Sean Smith, he had some he has some good pace in that car. And he's unfortunate, but unfortunately, he's down in P7. Yeah, of course, he probably be left to Rory missing out on that qualifying session. He's certainly shown some good pace, although there is a, quite a few slow laps there, possibly from some mistakes he's made. So it might have been a blessing in disguise a bit for him that is able to take this first race maybe get some of those mistakes out the way and find out what really works around here and he seems to have nailed that lap time now so maybe he'll be one to watch out for in the second race to see him coming up the order a bit yeah but if you look at the lap times that he set there 34.570 then you look at robbo's fastest lap of 50 34.573 so three thousandths of a second separating those two drivers it just shows how competitive robbo really is tonight he's got he's got his head down and by the lap times that he's been setting it's absolutely uh it's absolute masterclass here that that he's getting that pace in the nissan gtr we've got nick jones setting his personal best with a 35 flat in p4 so he's slowly trying to make his way up back towards the front he's closing up on mccallum a little bit so whether he can get past him in the next two laps we'll find out in due time but some very good lap times especially by robo so his pace and consistency tonight so far despite that mistake on lap two it's looking pretty strong jarman and if he looks to take out race one watch out for him to back it up in race two potentially yeah he's certainly had a lot of experience racing with us over probably the last five or six years so he was previously in main series before sort of all the restrictions came in and it really exploded with popularity um, so he's sort of dropped back down the tiers a bit over the years um, sort of was having a bit of a tough time in TS2 a few years ago and decided to drop down to TS3 obviously the rules at the time allowing him to do that so ever since he's dropped down he has sort of found his place a bit and starting to enjoy his racing a lot more which is what we really like to see here at track stars is that everyone can find sort of their own place where they feel they can be competitive have a good time and obviously enjoy their racing and keep coming back yeah absolutely and that's why we get that's why we get some good quality drivers coming out of TS3 making their way up into TS2 touring cars but obviously unfortunately we don't we haven't got a strong attendance only seven drivers so we did have eight there but unfortunately Muller Rothman in car 23 for the Kiwi pit lane has retired the car he came into the pit lane and has retired from the event uh, just mechanical issues and some problems with the car unfortunately that car is done for the night so we won't be seeing the 23 outs uh, on track for race two so a bit of a sad day for Kiwi pit lane to have their car out, uh, out of this session, out of round two. But he can hold his head up high for a great race back at right, back at round one. And obviously that dominant, that strong performance at Monza, getting himself a double podium. So we'll be looking to keep an eye on Rothman as the championship season goes by. But a 34.3 is the fastest lap 
set by Nick Jones in the Lexus. Wow, that's some very, very fast pace. And he's actually closed up a little bit on McCallum on this final lap here. Don't know if he's going to be able to get him. That's a very limited opportunity to go for overtakes around here. There are a couple of key hotspots, especially down at Turn 9, and then obviously at Turn 14 it's the next best opportunity. But it's more or less kind of single-file racing as he's actually going quicker. He's got three tenths purple in that first sector, so the pace that he set in, uh, in qualifying wasn't relevant to what he's actually setting right now 34.3 could potentially get into the low 30 to, to the high 33s that is that is god pace by nick jones at this late phase of the race we'll see what happens if he can get past mccallum but back up towards the front here the gap has closed a little bit between robertson and bandit hope but it's not enough to pose any threat on the manning for robo sport racing car 20 ventured on his own back last year in 20 in 2023 Gave the keys to Robo Sport Racing to Craig Harcourt to form Rusty Nuts Racing, who has then given the keys to Mitch Curry to form MC Motorsport. But this is where it's all happened, ladies and gentlemen. Back in the glory days, it is for Richard Robinson. Robo taking the checkered flag and the victory for race one here at Sardinia for the TS3 Touring Cars for round two. Takes the victory and Bandit Hope takes it out P3. McCallum just holds on to P3. Nick Jones couldn't capitalize on that unfortunate uh, unfortunate start couldn't work his way back up towards the front settles in for p4 chris wallace down the back there is about to round up in p5 simon stockdale and sean smith rounds up our seven man driver grid here tonight unfortunately for rothman retiring from the event but what a fantastic race that was what a what a dominant race that was by Robinson as he crosses the line, taking his first victory in TS3 Touring Cars in quite some time and in a very good fashion as well. 3.2 seconds over Bound and Hope and 8.4 ahead of McCallum. So some great pace by Robinson to get that car into P1. Takes the full 100 points, not the fastest lap, but he does take the clean sweep of race one. So Jarman, that is, a, that is some great racing there by all the drivers here tonight. Unfortunate DNF by Rothman, but I think We've got this track now, we've got this track, we've got the drivers getting themselves familiar with the cars, with the wind direction, uh, who they're racing, obviously maybe the net code as they're trying to find out their spacing and their spatial awareness. I feel like we're going to be in for quite a, an, an epic race two here. I feel like everyone looks like they've gone up to speed, but I think race two is going to probably be a very strong race for all seven drivers. Yeah, that that is something we have seen quite a lot across all track star series actually where you have multiple races sort of see the first race everyone sort of feels himself like feels out all the conditions sort of what they've got underneath them and then for the second or third race they sort of amp up the pressure a bit and you sort of see the intensity increase with all the drivers and it sort of yeah gets a bit more uh, what would the word be for a bit more, um, I'd say, yeah, probably a bit more competitive between everyone. Yeah, they get a little, they find a little bit more, a bit more of a competitive edge on them, on themselves as well as trying to work out what the drivers ahead and behind their strengths and weaknesses. But it feels like it's very close this season. We saw it back at Monza how close the field was when the when the top three and the top five crossed the star finish line, and we actually probably might be seeing a little bit of that, maybe a little glimpse of that uh, before we get ready for race two. But yeah, but it's such a great race here, and you know, for a track like Sardinia, uh, being a brand new circuit here at Track Stars Racing Series, so what we've seen in the past uh, in other forms of racing, you do see some competitive racing here, and because there's not many chances of over of overtaking, and the tire degradation is quite low around this track, um, it's actually really good to see how strong these guys are and that competitive edge that they can bring. Uh, out of those super, out of those soft tyres, and themselves, it just brings some, such quality driving amongst our field. Yeah, it's certainly, definitely getting very competitive with the times we've seen in qualifying. Certainly, very closely separated between the t like between second to seventh, I think it was. So, yeah, it definitely could be very close in this second race here that we've got coming up very shortly. Yeah, absolutely. So as we get that, as we get ourselves ready for race two, it is Robinson, Bound and Hope, McCallum starting 
in the top three, Jones, Wallace, Stockdale and Smith. That is our seven-man driver grid here for race two. The, the order doesn't change. We don't go to a second qualifying. The, the way you see it on the, on the grid as the results of race one is going to be the starting grid for race two as we get ourselves underway very shortly as the drivers have a little bit of debrief with their engineers. But it looks like they might be getting themselves ready to go very shortly for that green flag to come through. But... Again, we're going to have to think about that uh, that race two monopoly money bet, Jarman. Uh, can Robbo back it for two and two, for back it for two to two, or will we see Ben and Hope put a charge through? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one this time around. Of course, this time around we, we do have Baden Hope, obviously, starting on the front row instead of being out of position free. So maybe watch for him, see what kind of launch he gets once the lights go out and maybe he could spring a surprise and jump ahead of Robinson early on and control this race. Absolutely right. So if, as we get ourselves ready, the cars are on the grid and we are ready to go here for race two of the Trackstars TS3 Touring Cars. So a very short debrief from the drivers. They said, to the, they said to them, come in for a quick talk and then get yourselves back on our track because race two is about to happen as those five red lights are about to go green and we're off and underway racing green flag between the two championship rivals it is Robinson ahead of Vandenhope and McCallum right behind there so the three Nissans leading the pack goes they go into turn one McCallum tries to throw the car down the inside in a contact made between the two contenders of the championship we can see Wallace runs it onto the gravel trap but it is Robbo that still keep, that keeps the lead of P1 ahead of uh, ahead of Vandenhope and McCallum in P3 getting a position on Jones oh, on Jones has actually dropped down to P6 unfortunately so not a great start for Jones again that's two races in a row that Jones hasn't been been not hasn't been able to get the start that he wanted gets himself up into P5 as he starts to come towards the cathedral at turn six as up they go on to the back straight it is Robbo it is Bannon Hope it is McCallum it is Wallace up into P4 Jones Stockdale and Smith so we can see now the gap the track sorry the drivers now they're a lot closer now than what they were into race one so it's now all about settling in to a rhythm make your positions make your ground nice and early and then start making that late race charge as you get towards the end of the race at an end of lap eight nine and ten to mark your to mark your presence and try and get yourself onto the podium as we go through turn 13 for the first time in race two two drivers running wide there another victim there it is Bandit Hope and McCallum both running wide at the corners there Robbo runs very wide at turn 14 which compromises his exit run as they go down onto the main straight for the first time here at race two Robbo leads the pack ahead of Bandit Hope ahead of McCallum and um, Chris Wallace up into P4 Jones Stockdale and Smith down rounding up our seven man grid what a what a hectic start that was Jarman as we see some moves about to be made very shortly yes Jones and Wallace going side by side in the turn one Jones using that slipstream very nicely there to get ahead into fourth place and now Wallace will probably be looking to tuck in behind maybe follow a bit hopefully put up a bit more of a fight than what he did in the first race provide a bit of entertainment for us here in the commentary box yeah, absolutely. So it looks like he's just struggling a little bit there. He just ran wide at turn five, which is going to give Stockdale an opportunity to try and go around the outside. We'll be able to make the move stick as they go side by side through the cathedral. Oh, a bit of a drift on the exit of turn six there. He lost the rear end of the car. Thankfully, it didn't spin the car around and lose uh, lose track positions to Sean Smith right behind in P7 for MC Motorsport but still holds on to P6, but I'm very impressed here. But what I'm really impressed here with Jarman is with the top seven, they're a lot closer now. They're a lot closer than what they were in race one. The gap between first and seventh is only about four and a half to five seconds. It is so close between the top seven so far in this opening few laps. Yeah, absolutely. They're very much bunched up here. I'm not sure what's gone on there. Wallace has just dropped off That's the pace there a little bit. Not sure if there was a bit of network issues there that have maybe caused him to slow down a bit, but yeah, he's certainly dropped to the back of the field. But as you were saying, certainly the field has bunched up a lot more in this second race. Drivers obviously learning their lessons from race number one and putting them into good practice here in the second race to try and have a much better performance than what they had the first time around. 
Yeah, and watch out for Sean Smith. He's up into P6. So watch for his progression now. We saw some fast pace by the MC Motorsport driver, but now he's got now he's got the hang of the car. He's got the hang of what he, of the drivers he's racing against. Watch him to come up towards the field here as we have the intensive battle that we saw in race one. Ruin again for race two. It is Matt McCallum and Nick Jones. Nissan versus Lexus as they come up towards Cathedral. Turn six. Ken Jones throwing the car on the inside. It looks like he almost showed the nose. Couldn't get the move done. McCallum chops the nose off. Great racing by for the paddle for P3. So close between those guys. I actually thought they were going to go side by side the whole way around and lead up towards turn nine. But it is McCallum still ahead of Jones. A little bit compromised there on the exit was Jones. But he's going to have to regroup and try again to get past the CP driver as he rounds up in P4. But the gap between first and second is still closing. And actually, you can see McCallum and uh, Jones. They're quite close to the top two so any mistake by Robbo or Bandit Hope watch out for these two drivers to capitalize yeah the gap between third and fourth is certainly closing up to the front two so they could provide a maybe a bit of a smoky option for the race win here if they can get themselves ahead of Baden Hop and obviously Robinson out in front although Robinson now just stretching that margin out a little bit over Baden Hop so He's starting to establish himself in the race lead here as we've got three laps completed. Yeah, I think he made a mistake at turn 13 to Baden Hop uh, in P2. So I saw a bit of dirt uh, being kicked up when we were on board with McCallum and Jones. So probably that's the reason why he's dropped off the back end of the 20 Robo Sport Racing Nissan. So he's now into the clutches of the CP Motorsports and, Sand and Sandstorm Racing's uh, Nick Jones down in P4. So they've, they've got a nice healthy gap over Stockdale in P5 and then we have Sean Smith down the rear of the field in P6 as well as Chris Wallace but the battle for P2 is on for what we thought was the battle for P3 has now turned into P2 between McCallum and Jones to try and see if they can take any advantage of the ITFR driver the championship leader coming into this round is all under pressure from the CP Motorsports driver he's going to throw the nose in the inside he doesn't thinks better of it he's going to wait for the opportunity to come through at turn 14 and get a lot get a run on the back straight but he just drift the car a little bit wide there on the exit of turn nine so he had to drift the car and hold that uh, oversteer moment that he had at the nissan loses a few car lengths to the itfr driver which has now given jones a chance to close the gap between himself and mccallum in p3 as they go towards turn 14 runs wide does mccallum but he doesn't get a bad run there i thought it was i thought he was going to get a compromise there on with a with a wide entry but it got a bit more of a slingshot effect there Maybe not best run by Jones as well, but very nice racing so far by the top two. Both trying to find, the top four rather, they're both trying to find some opportunities to go for an overtake. And I think they're playing it, they're playing a very smart here, John. They're not taking those chances just yet because they know it's still early on in the race. Yeah, of course, maybe holding back a little bit, maybe not wanting to do anything too aggressive to try and attract the penalty to themselves as well. So maybe just, yeah, not sort of go for that big aggressive bold move and it doesn't come off and instead just try and sort of work out what the strengths and weaknesses are maybe wait for a mistake to happen and then pounce on that and get the overtake done much more cleanly yeah and as we just saw on the leaderboard there we saw short smith has gone past the stockdale and up into p5 the mc motorsport drivers coming from last place up into p5 so there's only about five and a half laps to go to the end of this race. Can he catch up to this up to this uh, group that is battling for P2? He sets the fastest lap with a 34.6. And these guys are battling each other so much, they're compromising their race pace, which could potentially give Sean Smith an opportunity later on at the end of this race to close up on these guys here. But McCallum runs wide. So does Jones. So turn 13 providing very troublesome for all the drivers there. Contact made between Jones and McCallum there as they lead up towards turn 14. And it's a huge mistake there by the contenders between McCallum and Jones. But thankfully for Jones, he pulls off to the side, redresses that position. And I, gave, I said the opportunity was there for Sean. And uh, he took it there, but quite, but the easiest way possible. Yeah, it's all fallen into his lap there. Basically, I'm not sure what happened. It looked like McCallum's car just jumped about a little bit in the braking zone looked like it sort of jumped forward and then back again maybe that caught Jones by surprise and was just unable to avoid that collision there but he's certainly done the right thing 
pulling off the race line and allowing McCallum to move back ahead of him. So hopefully the stewards will look on that a bit more favourably when they do look at the footage. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's very unlucky as well because there's such a nice battle pack for P2, but both McCallum and Jones ran wide at 13. And I think they just both got caught up on the braking spine. I think, uh, I think McCallum broke a little bit earlier, but I think Jones wasn't really aware that he that the dirty tyre effect, especially with the new uh, updated physics on 1.4 and patch 1.49, that the tyre physics, when you actually go off the circuit, is pretty harsh. Uh, on these cars, and it's actually, it actually feels a little bit more realistic that way. It makes it in the, in the sense that it's very hard to pull the cars up going into the braking zone. That you do lock the tyres, it feels like you are locking the tyres, and you can't slow the car down at all. So, very unfortunate there for Jones to make contact with McCallum. But, like you said there, he did do the right thing. He did pull off the racing line, gave the position back to McCallum, gave him all the track position and time loss that he could to McCallum. And, like you said, he might be a little bit, he might get away with that, but we'll wait and see until the end of the result there. But Sean Smith does go up into P3 and actually promotes Simon Stockdale up into P4 as well. So running very nicely there in P4. McCallum and Jones, fifth and sixth, and Chris Wallace rounding up our seven man grill as we, as we finish lap six to start lap seven with Robinson in P1 and Bannon Hope in P2. So it's a Nissan 1 2 3 with the first of the, of the Lexus drivers in Stockdale in P4. get towards lap 7 of 10. We're going to go for an onboard lap here in the hands of Richard Robinson, your race one victor, as he comes towards the back section of the track. So sit back, ladies and gentlemen, tune into the action, turn up the volume, grab yourself some food and drinks, and tune in for what is it going to be an awesome lap here around Sardinia in the hands of Richard Robinson. Side that we can see there in the cockpit of car 20 of the Robert Sport racing in the hands of Richard Robson. You can just see there as well, as well, John. I don't know if you're picking up on quite a few things there. You can just see how smooth his inputs are. He's taking it very cautious, but he's getting that he's getting that lap time. But his lap time, his best is a 34.6, and Sean Smith has pretty much done the same as well. We know Sean Smith has a little bit more of aggressive nature in his driving style, but Robbo very smooth and very consistent as I say that he, he, he almost spins the car at turn nine but besides that mistake there just some finesse driving by Robbo and that's why he's able to stretch that margin over Bandit Hope in P2. Yeah of course he does have the luxury of being out in front so sort of the smooth driving certainly lends itself to being out in front sort of you've got a bit more pressure on yourself you don't want to go too aggressive and make a mistake run off into the grass catch a barrier, something like that. So you sort of do things a bit smoother, keep it a bit more measured and in control and try and protect that lead as much as you can in comparison to obviously someone like Smith who is doing a bit more chasing and trying to get himself up the order. Yeah, speaking of Smith as well, he's actually set the fastest lap there, 34.392 on that previous lap. So he's closing that gap on Vandenhoek. As we see there, unfortunately, Mad Dog runs it very deep at turn one and loses the position to McCallum. So in a costly error by the Lexus driver, back down to P5. He was running P4 very nicely there, but he's now in the battle pack between the two fierce competitors, Matt McCallum and Nick Jones, fourth and sixth with the, with the Mad Dog in the middle. 
in p5 just a costly mistake there and it, and it's very easily done as well jarman you can miss your breaking point down into turn one you feel like you can just break a little bit later than other drivers but you, when you do lock up that front then when you do lock up that front left tire it just the car just doesn't turn at all yeah and especially f like from the laps that i've sort of cut on the track in practice it is very easy to run too deep into that first corner and find yourself out into that gravel or just running slightly wide and compromising your exit so it is very easy to do there down in the run to turn one so certainly don't hold anything against these guys if they do make a mistake like that as you just see Stockdale running wide there a bit and trying to go a bit defensive but unfortunately nothing he could do about that and that allows Nick Jones back into the top five. It's very unlucky there for Stockdale. He was just right up there in P4 on the previous lap and just drops down to P6. So not the lap that he wants to remember. A lap 9 of 10, he wants to forget about that lap after running in a good position there by the fortunate mistakes made by both McCallum and Jones as they made contact at Turn 14 a few laps ago. But they dropped down to P4 and 5 as we have the battle pack for P2 now brewing between Bannon Hope and Sean Smith. So we have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Smith came from the back of the field at P7. He's up into P3 with the hands of with the hands of a blessing uh, from the contact made by McCallum and Jones. But now this looks like pure pace from Sean Smith. This is the pace that we were missing in the TS3 touring cars from Sean Smith. He's got a good run at the exit of Cathedral. Can he get underneath the rear wing of the ITFR driver, who is the championship leader? But we'll wait and see as the cars cross the finish line. Will he keep the lead? Will he lose that position to Robbo? We'll find out in due time because Sean Smith is here to play. He's ready to attack the ITFR driving light on the brakes there. Turn nine, can't get the move done, but it actually pushes Bendit into a mistake there. So they could compromise him into turn 13, get close enough to the rear wing of the Nissan GTR ahead of you and you can set yourself up a great run into turn 14. It might go defensive here. Let's see what the man does up into P4, uh, down into P2, down at turn 14. He holds the inside line very nicely there, and that is it. No more opportunities for Sean Smith, but the one man that has capitalized from start to finish in both races here tonight has done the full clean sweep here. It is Robbo. Richard Robertson has taken the victory here for race two, the round win, the clean sweep. Bandit Hope rounds up to P2, just holding on to P2 ahead of Sean Smith after a last to P3 drive. What a great drive that was for Sean Smith to get back up into P3. Matt McCallum and Nick Jones, then Stockdale and Wallace rounding up our second field there. But Robbo, just too good in that race. 2.5 ahead of Bandit Hope, but what a race that was for the man that has led from, from lights to flag in both races as well. So a great event, a great round for his own team in Robo Sport Racing. Bandon Hope and Smith join him on the podium for race two. McCallum and Jones, what a great battle that was, John. We have to think about it as well. Such great quality racing between McCallum and Jones. Just some good intensive battles there, but unfortunately just that mistake there by Jones cost uh, what could have potentially have been, you know, maybe a battle for P2, but instead of Smith, it, you, could also, you would also have McCallum and Jones joining him in that. Yeah, definitely some great battling there up and down the field as well. But yeah, especially between McCallum and Jones, they've sort of duked it out a fair bit across this round and been very close to each other. Unfortunately, a bit too close with some contact seeing McCallum run wide, but yeah, sort of hearing the team radio in the background from Jones, he said, sort of said to his crew back in the pits that that wasn't the way he wanted to have the battle to end, so he made the decision to pull aside and let McCallum back in front and try and do it the right way. And I think word from the stewards as well is that, yeah, there was a bit of lag involved in that incident as well. Yeah, absolutely, and unfortunately with the lag, it's it it is it is we can't do it. We, there's not much we can do about it because you know it's, you try to get such stable connections, but it happens all over the all over the sim racing world as well. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Gran Turismo or any other platform of racing; it's always going to have that connection. So it's a little bit of just trying to put yourself in that position and think to yourself, right? Uh, can I do I do I take the risk of going for the move there? Whether that car ahead of me is going to jump back towards my car or is going to go forwards himself? 
we're not so sure. So it's all about just trying to judge the way on how you race your competitors. But I feel like, but I, I do feel like they are starting to get themselves familiar with each other. So the gap was actually closer this time around. 15 seconds, 15.8 seconds uh, separating our top seven, where it was 28 seconds in race one. So a lot closer this time around in race two. And just that little bit more competitiveness in race in race two, Jarman, just like we kind of predicted that uh, race two was going to bring up here. Yeah, definitely a lot closer from first to seventh. And yeah, maybe... Drivers getting more familiar with the track, more familiar with each other and the machinery that they're using. So results in a much better performance from everyone across the field. And yeah, maybe it might be a bit of a hint for a few drivers to put some more practice in in the lead up to the next round we have coming up. Absolutely. So before we get to the next round, we're going to do our driver of the day. So let us know in the chat below who your driver of the day is for round two here at Sardinia Road Track A. I'll throw it over to my commentator, very my co-commentator Jarman, very shortly. But I think for the man that needs to give uh, honourable mentions as well, I'm going to give an honourable mention there to Sean Smith uh, for that race two result that he had there. Get it challenging, Bandon Hope. And I think if Sean Smith commits to the rest of the championship, watch out for him to come through the pack and start taking out some race victories next for MC Motorsport. So watch out for him. But definitely my driver of the day and driver of the round is going to have to go to Robbo Robinson in for Robbo Sport Racing. Just a faultless round for the man in car 20. And he wants to make sure that this championship is his so he can finally get himself a well-deserved trophy coming his way uh, up, up north in Queensland. So uh, let us know in the chat who you think your driver of the day is. But over to you, Jarman. Who do you think who are you going to give your award to? Will we give it to Robbo and go two for two? Or do you have someone else in mind? That could be that could win that could win driver of the day. Yeah, obviously honourable mentions to the likes of Smith who came through the field in that second race, and of course uh, Baden Hop as well. It's one of those days where maybe he couldn't quite get the win, but he certainly kept it consistent and finished second rather than pushing too hard and getting in an incident like we have seen in the past from him. So certainly a bit of extra maturity shown there. A nice mature drive from him, but of course it is hard to go past Robinson with the clean sweep. Certainly, for me, a well-deserved driver of the day for him, so make it two from two from me as well. Absolutely. So there we go, two for two for Robbo. So let us know in the chat if you vote for Robbo as well. What a great race he performed. And there's our round two result. He gets the full 200 points there, as well as the pole position award for round two here at Sardinia Road Track A. But looking down the rest of the field there, we can see quite close competitiveness. We can see Jones and Smith have leveled up on 137 points there. McCallum on 145, but Bannon Hope with those two second placings is just is on 170, 30 points behind Robinson, which when we go to the championship standings very shortly there, uh, we will be seeing a bit of a change uh, between the top two, but not by much though. You'll see how close it is. And there you go. It is literally nothing. It is even points between Robinson and Bannon Home. Bannon Home clean sweep round one. Robbo clean sweep round two. So I'll tell you what, Jarman, this is going to be so competitive here uh, between Robinson and Bannon Home. But it is still early days. We have a nine round championship here in the TS3 Touring Cars Championship. So watch out for those names down the back there McCallum, Jones. Stockdale, even Smith, he's only 200, he's 233 behind after racing in this one, but we do have to take into consideration, we do have drop rounds in, but in all categories of the Touring Car Championships, where we take one drop round away from our drivers, and when it gets to the last round at Dragon Trail Seaside, that's when the gloves are off, and it's going to be all about the drivers and who can take out that checkered flag, but an even start there by Robbo and Bandon Hope in P1 and P2. Yeah, it's going to be very close at the top of the table, of course. Robinson and Badenhop, of course, having the advantage of the experience with these cars in the previous year. So they're off to a fast start in this championship. But, yeah, certainly it'll be very interesting to see how the rest of this season plays out. And, of course, the next few rounds, you see the likes of McCallum and Jones there in third and fourth. And if they really start stringing a round or two together, maybe they can get a round win here or there and maybe push themselves a bit further up the order as they start to get to grips with these GT500 cars and of course we can't overlook Smith there down in 8th 
after missing the first round. So he will have that zero point as the drop round. And of course, tonight's result as well may just put him back a little bit and give him a bit of a hill to climb over. But certainly on the pace that he's shown tonight, it definitely won't be impossible for him to get some good results across the rest of the season if he does commit yeah. to the full series and maybe reel in that gap once the drop round is applied. Yeah, absolutely. And we also had, we didn't have Mark Hasseldean and Dave Smith join us down in ninth and 10th place. So he's actually leapfrogged them on, um, on countback as well. So it's a P8 for Sean Smith. So as the drivers are debriefing with their race engineers and they're getting themselves ready for the next round, the next time we see the Track Stars TS3 Touring Car Challenge will be this weekend, August the 25th of 2024. We are back in the home, in the, in the, in the hometown of one of our, or well, not the hometown, but the home country of one of our favourite uh, members of the Track Stars Racing Series uh, family in our legendary commentator uh, all the years ago. Back, I would believe, I mean, you probably know a lot more about him than myself, but back in the back in the core days, back in the early days of Track Stars Racing Series, the home, it's the home country of our favourite commentator in Adam Weller. We go to Brands Hatch, the Grand Prix layout for the British Sprint. Two races of 13 laps here for our drivers for the next time out. And uh, who knows, maybe we might be able to see maybe another driver that goes for a clean sweep. We might be able to see, we might see Robbo and Ben and Hope duke it out a little bit more just for that win. But it's going to be all action packed here at Brands Hatch because Two things, you can't overtake, and it's a very tight track, Jarman, so watch out for those two factors. And especially with these cars, they're big, heavy machinery, and with a big engine and a low aero package, these guys are going to be in for a tough slog uh, for round three. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a very technical encounter there at Brands Hatch, of course. Just one wheel off into the grass, certainly through that Grand Prix section of the circuit, you'll find yourself spinning or crashing into a barrier so we could see a few surprises there it may be about who can remain consistent across the night rather than who has the outright pace but of course getting up the front will be still just as important and if you get yourself out in front and keep it clean then you're certainly going a long way towards a race win of course hopefully Maybe we do see a special guest appearance from Mr. Adam Weller in the paddock at some stage across the weekend as it is close to his home. I'm not sure he'll let Neil out of the house though to join him. <laughs> I was about to say I was about to say I don't think I don't think Neil's gonna join him out on the paddock as well. So but so maybe Neil's just gonna hold him captive for, for the event. Maybe we'll just have to watch at home at the Track Stars Racing Series YouTube channel. But it is but we will be back bringing you all the action of the TS3 touring cars on the delayed broadcast here on the Track Stars Racing Series. So if you have liked what you've seen, subscribe to the Rack the Track Stars Racing Series YouTube channel. Make sure you give us a follow on all our socials, our Facebook, join our discord if you want to be part of our field here of, of talented tier 3 touring car drivers as well as the tiers 2 touring cars as they get their next round ready for the daytona road course in two weeks time but it's been great to have you back here jarman it's uh like i said it was a bit of it's a bit of a throwback to the old to the good old days but it's great to have you in the commentary box once again here and to call all the action here at sardinia uh, it was definitely a pleasure to join you and yeah certainly had a great time calling the races so yeah, if there's ever a vacancy, I'll be happy to rejoin you in the commentary box for, to call another door, race. The door is wide open, good sir. You're more than welcome to join the commentary box. We'll have to try and see if we can uh, get Ryan Palmer in, uh, uh, our other TS3 commentator, into the commentary booth. Maybe to make it a three-man booth. Who knows? So that'll be a bit of a colourful commentary going around for the TS3 touring cars. But that is then... But here for now, thank you so much for tuning in for round two at the Track Stars Racing Series Tier 3 Touring Cars Championship, where we saw Richard Robinson clean sweep the event, took pole position and took race victories, two race victories next to his name to take the championship lead away. But he's level on points with Band and Hope on 370 points as we go to the next round at Brands Hatch. Who will come out on top? Who will take the championship lead between those two? Will we see a new championship leader? We'll find out in due time on the delayed broadcast. But thanks to myself and Nick Potasso and Jarman Dallas joining me in the commentary box. And thank you, our wonderful viewers, joining us on the Track Stars Racing Series YouTube channel. Subscribe, give us a like. And if you 
want to get yourself into all the action, join in on our Discord as well. But that is it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining in. And we'll see you guys for the next rounds at Brands Hatch for the TS3 Touring Cars Championship. Good night, good evening, and see you next time.